What's up, best friends? It's your boy, BD. I'm back. And today, I'm going to talk to you about stuff. And when I say stuff, I'm talking about devices. And no, I'm not talking about your Windows, laptop, Mac OS, iPad, Chrome, Firefox. I don't even, none of that stuff. Uh, we're talking like different type of devices. And these are devices that, uh, yeah, maybe you're selling to your customers. Uh, maybe it's a, a car of some nature that's kind of internet connected. Uh, maybe you sell some cameras. Maybe it's a chupacabra. Just kidding. It's your devices. Maybe you have like a internet connected car. Maybe you have an autonomous vehicle selling IP based cameras that are doing all kinds of cool reporting, shipping containers. Maybe it's a gas station point of sale. You have your IIoT, you have your OT. Heck, you may even have an ambulance that's reporting back critical vital signs back to the ER where they're about to take a patient. So, Again, like this isn't like your run of the mill device. This is something, a product or service that you're giving to your uh, customers. Now, with that said, <clears throat> these things are never one and done. Uh, they, they need to be touched every once in a while. And so uh, they're going to have to grab updates. And uh, maybe you're like my grandpa and you're like, oh, you know what? We have a perfect place to host these applications that need to come up. And it's called the data center. And that's cool. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. We can kind of make all things work. And so, We'll call it, uh, I don't know, applications A and B for these updates for these devices that need to kind of come back over here and communicate. Or a little bit, you know, maybe you're thinking, we're going to do this stuff in the cloud. And good news is I can support you there as well. So uh, we have the cloud. Your usual suspects, Azure, AWS, GCP, OCI, again, it doesn't really matter. And maybe those are similar applications, or maybe there's completely different. And we'll just call them application C uh, and D. Now, when we look at this, we have to figure out like these devices need to be able to uh, connect back, right? Like how are they going to do it? So maybe one of them would be like, hey, we're going to send traffic right here. It's going to beacon back over to the uh, public cloud, going out to application C, and you're going to do something to, uh, you know, posture this username, pastor, maybe a certificate. But the idea is uh, you're starting to develop what I call an attack surface, right? So it's kind of a negative thing. So we'll say, hey, if it's reachable, it's breachable, and that's always a bad thing. Now, back at the data center, you could be publicly facing these, these applications as well, or you'd be doing something like a VPN type of client. And again, uh, lots of problems with it. It's sitting there waiting for what? Waiting for your devices to come back over there and phone back home. Uh, but the challenge with that is it's also open to the entire internet. It's going to be a little bit messy. And so we look at that and say, that's going to be a challenge. And the other part to VPN is that you <clears throat> are taking the biggest liability in your life, which is a device, like a third-party device, and you're putting it onto the network. Uh, and that's going to do the, the whole like lateral uh, movement. It's not very uh, zero trustish at all. So like that's kind of a, a negative. And the next one that I look at is that uh, in order for you to do like this whole VPN connectivity, chances are, uh, you might have to install a client right here. So then I have to worry about, is the client up to date? Is it running correctly? Is it always on? Um, so that can be a challenge. And then also when you think about that, you have clients to contend with, and then you have you know complex networks as well. So you're gonna have to think of patches, maintenance, upgrades, scale events, all those things on top of policy to kind of orchestrate this. And again, it's doing it from a device that is somewhere that generally is out of control, but it needs to be updated. And I look at this and say that there's got to be a better way. So using the power of post editing, I'm gonna snap my fingers, I'm gonna clean this light board. And we're back. It's already looking better if you ask me. Uh, so for those of you watching, you may have seen some stuff. You know it's coming. I know it's coming. What we're gonna do right here is talk a little bit about the Zero Trust Exchange, the Zscare Cloud. And before you fast forward or even click off, just know that there's a little bit more going on here than meets the eye, but we'll back into it. So some of the fundamental architecture that you're already familiar with is around the ability to reduce your attack surface. So that's gonna be the first thing that we kind of uh, focus in on. Very uh, squeaky today. So by first and foremost, by reducing the attack surface, what I wanna do is I don't wanna have to deploy VPNs and I want to take every single application that you guys have and hide it back behind the zero trust chain. There is no inbound access to it. It's just an any, any deny. It's completely dark. You can't hack what you can't see. 
And for those of you watching, maybe you're like, oh, well, how does that work? We have a Zscaler VM. Uh, it is kind of has the ability to talk internally to the applications, but instead of allowing traffic in, it does like this whole like inside out connectivity to the Zero Trust Exchange. Simple as that. Same thing over here in the cloud. And it doesn't really matter which cloud you're working on. It's that very same fundamental architecture. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, oh, uh, yeah, we know how, to, how you're going to do this. You're going to convince us to install a client or an SDK. Uh, and the answer is actually, no, I'm not going to do that at all whatsoever. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position something a little bit different. And uh, these devices, they're internet connected, right? And the way that they're usually connected is with like uh, internet service of some nature. And what we have here is the Zscaler uh, Cellular SIM. Now this is available in two flavors, either physical SIM or an eSIM. But in either case, you're good to go. And what's kind of neat about that is uh, this is going to be my feeble attempt at drawing like a cellular network. So we're going to come over here. Uh, it looks like this, I think, a little thing beaconing out. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. The way that the SIM card works is, again, there's no client and there's no SDK. You just plug it in. And 100% of that traffic originating from this device is going outbound to the Internet. <clears throat> now, it doesn't really matter what that device is in the world. This is going to be a service that works anywhere where it's, you know, U US, APAC, or EMEA, and vice versa, right? It's taking this traffic across that any mobile network, and the first stop is going to be the Zero Trust Exchange. And now this gives us the ability, when the traffic wraps here, to do true uh, Zero Trust policy. That means you're going to get, com you know, complete control and visibility into your traffic and what's going on. So when we look at this, we're just going to basically meet in the middle, as we've always done, but we're doing this without a client that allows these devices to communicate back to these applications without putting the device on the network, reducing your attack surface, and all that good stuff. Now... I'm sure somebody here is saying, oh, we're going to qualify out, Brian. We like our expensive networks and complexity because we, for whatever reason, we need to be actually come up. We actually need to have the ability to come back over here and talk to this device. Well, guess what? I'm about to hit you with the Steve Jobs moment. There's one more thing. So let's take that employee, that user. They're over here. They're at home, Starbucks, abroad, in the office. It just doesn't matter. They have Zscare client connector on their laptop. And that traffic always comes in right here. And I know you're thinking, oh, Brian, are we going to take the traffic and bring it over here and do something weird and push an update? Absolutely not. So not only do I allow this to communicate directly here and talk to these applications, I can take a sanctioned user that's past posture and can actually allow them to come back this direction to the device. So if you think about it, maybe you guys are doing some advanced troubleshooting. You'd be able to pull logs, some telemetry off of there on a whim. Or even maybe you need to push an update because it's an OT device and a segmented network, you're going to be completely covered. So when we look at Zscare Cellular, it gives us the ability, right? Reduce the attack surface. You can't have that lateral movement. There's no client, no SDK, zero trust policy that gives you the ability to do complete control and visibility. And ultimately, what we're doing is we're driving down risk entirely. Time to value is be much quicker. And last but not least, you're going to be seeing a ton of money because you're not having to deal with patches, maintenance, upgrades, and scale events. You're just going to set a policy and forget about it. And with that said, that's my time. Thanks for watching. Do me a huge favor. Reach out to your local sales team. We'd love to talk to you more about Zscaler Cellular. Have a good day.